What do we got, buddy? Do you think it's for you? I got something that you're gonna like, Isabella. Yeah, there's a smile. What a pretty baby. There you go. Okay, so the thing inside of this Fragile box is going to completely change our lives. In fact, the thing that is inside of this box addresses what legendary sailor Lynn Party once called the curse of cruising. Now, can you guess what that curse of cruising is? Is it seasickness? No. Is it piracy or crime? No. Is it the huge amount of maintenance that sailboats need? No. No, the curse of cruising is laundry. Now, it might not be the first thing that you think of when you think of the hardest thing about sailing around the world, and it's probably not the hardest, but it really is one of the most annoying. A lot of times, places that we go just simply don't have laundromats, and if they do have them, sometimes they're a really long walk away. So we have to lug huge bags of laundry, long distances in the heat, and then when we get there, we don't know if it's going to be coin-operated or if there's some sort of a card. It's always a giant mission, and it takes up a huge amount of our day. Not to mention that it can be really expensive. In some places like Grand Cayman, in Bermuda was really expensive, and actually here in Malta, it's pretty pricey. Now it's worth mentioning that we have tried washing our clothes by hand in the past, and it is just a joke. Like it takes so much time, it takes a lot of effort, and it takes a huge amount of fresh water. It's extremely inefficient. And these are all the struggles that we had with laundry before Little Miss Poop Factory came into our lives. Ooh, you were a busy little pooper, weren't you? How did you get poop on this sock, baby, huh? So by now I'm sure you know what's in the mystery box. It's a washing machine. Hooray! <laughs> and dryer combo and is the smallest one I've ever seen so let's get this out of here and see where the heck we're gonna put this thing now right now our main goal is to learn how to raise Isabella as close to nature as we can comfortably manage and we're only a few months away from summer right now when we hope to leave Malta and explore the many remote islands off of Greece and Turkey but before we can take off we've got a couple of projects that we need to tackle to get our floating home ready to support support our new family out in the middle of nowhere. There's basically no excuse. <laughs> I've got to do this. Oh my God, I can't believe that just happened. I hope that this is going to work. We will see. Where are we going to put it on the boat, huh, baby? We don't have any room. Yay! Oh yeah. So, that's it. It's, uh, honestly, it's bigger than I thought it was gonna be. Don't worry, bud, I've got this all under control. So you can see it's it's really quite narrow. It's bulkhead mounted, so you can just mount it to the wall or whatever. Let's try and power this thing up real quick. Now, it is a 220 volt device. And so I had to get a 110 volt to 220 volt transformer. Let's see if that thing works and if this thing works. Oh man, I cannot wait to hear that noise once the thing's actually installed and we're gonna use it for the first time. It's a very like victorious noise. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, and then we push this button. Okay, opens up. Oh. I mean, this is my hand here, so it's not huge, but it definitely could do a small load, right? If we did one load every day, every other day, that would totally do the trick. Okay, cool. Now let's talk about where it's gonna go. So if we come here into the bathroom, we can look right behind the toilet and we've got this locker and it's technically a wet locker. Right now we've just got all of our jackets shoved into it. What I'm planning on doing is there's a bulkhead on the back side of this locker that the washing machine can bolt to, but the washing machine is a little bit bigger than the opening of this locker. Anyway, so next step is to start cutting this bulkhead. So I've got the multi-tool, I've got all my tools out. There's basically no excuse. <laughs> I've gotta do this. I just don't want to. Oh my God. And then also, of course, Isabella is asleep. And I don't know how I'm gonna do this without waking her up. Okay, hopefully if I close that door and the bathroom door, I won't wake them up. Ooh, God. Okay, Steve Brody, owner of Pacific Seacraft, please forgive me. 
So the key here is that I do as little damage as possible while making these cuts so that the end result won't just look totally trashed. But that can be easier said than done when wielding hammers, chisels, and power tools around such a beautifully finished interior. Ugh, I just realized there's plugs and screws going up from the bottom as well, so this trim's gonna take a while to take off. Now I decided to use my oscillating multi-tool here because it arguably makes the most controlled and accurate cuts out of any of the power tools that I have. But it also can take a very, very long time to cut through thick wood like this half-inch marine ply. Well, it's not even budging a little bit and I've cut everything that needs to be cut. The deal is, even though the fasteners are removed, I think that when they installed this, they used fasteners and an adhesive sealant. And so the adhesive sealant is keeping it in place. I think what I'm gonna have to do is make more cuts, like basically closer in to remove the majority of this bulkhead. And then what I'll be left with is a frame on the edges that I can kind of pry that out and remove the sealant and whatever piece by piece. Okay, so the area is cut open and it went relatively well. We're definitely gonna need, once this whole thing is installed, a woodworker to make a nice bit of trim that'll just cover all of this disaster that you see now. So now it's time to see if the washing machine is gonna fit, just for sure. There's like a light plastic housing that I can take off of the washing machine and put it in here and now give us a sense if it's gonna fit or not. Sweet! So there you go. That's gonna work out really, really well. Like kind of eerily stupidly well. <laughs> so now what I'm going to do is I kind of want to like finish the real dirty projects today so that when I clean today I'm not going to create all this dust again. So I've got to clean up the edges here where we removed the wood and there's still sealant. I'm just going to sand all that, clean it up, then hopefully clean all this and be done for the day. Issa, are you excited to have a washing machine? Buddy, what are you doing dressing her up like a bear? It was a present from the marina. <laughs> I think she's still a little bit too small. So her, her hands are like here. <laughs> she's like, ah. <laughs> Reminds me of a Christmas story. Day my feet began to sweat as those two fluffy little bunnies with the blue button eyes stared sappily up at me. Mwah. I could kiss you up all day, especially now that you're a bear. All right, so the next step with the washing machine install is I went and cut this plywood spacer that is going to fit right up against the bulkhead and it's gonna serve the purpose of a couple things. First of all, that washing machine is not as deep as this compartment is. So we wanna push it out a little bit so that the face of the washing machine is a little bit more in line with the face of you know all of this. Also, there's some texture in the fiberglass up here and like this pan won't allow the to come out so we got to kind of push everything this way for those things not to interfere with the install so this half inch plywood spacer should do the trick so I'm gonna mount this to the bulkhead mm. oh my god I can't believe that just happened I was drilling through the spacer into the bulkhead so I could screw the spacer onto the bulkhead and I went through the bulkhead and into the hose that goes from the engine coolant lines to the water heater so that when we run the engine it warms up our water and so coolant just went everywhere so i basically had to take that hose that i drilled through cut everything that was connecting it and holding it in place and then raise it up using some string so that the hole was higher than the level of the coolant so it would stop leaking oh and then this basin thing is just full of coolant this installation isn't affected by that i'm just going to keep going but now i'm going to have to replace that hose which is just such a bummer. That is the worst when I've got so many projects I want to accomplish and then I just added like a relatively big one and I'm gonna have to order that hose and that hose is expensive and I don't know if I can use metric. Ugh, how frustrating. All right, so I'm gonna clean this up and just keep going. 
So the next step is to use this really nice template that came with the washing machine to mark and drill the mounting holes. Well, I'm not making the same mistake again. So I'm making real small holes, being really careful, double checking the backside. And now I'm gonna check to make sure they're all in a good spot before I drill the bigger hole. Hey bud, I need your help. Ready? Yeah. You got it? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. All right, so the washing machine is mounted and I'm like blown away by how well this thing fits. I'm just so thrilled. It fits perfectly like it was meant to be here. I mean, look at that. It's just like exactly the right size. When I first started thinking about installing a washing machine on this boat, I just thought, Jordan, you're starting to get way too decadent with this freaking boat. You know what I mean? You don't have room for a washing machine on a 40 foot boat. There you go. We do, and this is gonna work out great, I think. So, we're not done yet. The next thing is I've gotta mount this transformer, and I think I'm gonna mount it in this compartment over here. I'm gonna install some plywood spacers that I just cut outside, just to kinda keep this thing exactly where I want it, up away from any potential water, and also a little brace so that it won't go anywhere if we get into rough seas. Well, I just drilled those holes one inch too low. That was dumb. All right, so then the next step is going to be to actually drill the hole in this bulkhead so that the power cord from the washing machine can get to that transformer. All right, so now that that's done, the next step is going to be running both the intake hose for the fresh water as well as the discharge hose. And so I'm just going to start to drill holes to route those hoses. Now, whenever I pass hose or wire through a bulkhead, I like to drill out a larger hole and then insert a larger diameter hose so that I can pass the wire or hose through that larger hose so that it won't chafe on the bulkhead. The washing machine came with this pre-made T-junction so that I can tap the inlet hose into our freshwater system. The easiest spot to do this was at the cold water inlet for our water heater. Hey bud, are you able to turn on the water pump? Ready. Okay, that is what I like to see. No dripping. All right, so now I need to route the discharge hose. I'm just gonna have it run into the bilge. The way I think I'm gonna do it is the bottom of this pan for what used to be the wet locker has a little drain. And so I'm just gonna drill out the kind of through hole fitting that is that drain so that the discharge hose can fit in there and hopefully that'll do the trick. The problem is that it goes into like a dead space down there. It doesn't actually go into the main bilge right away. I think there's some sort of like a drain hole in that dead space. There's like this hole, dead space, drain hole, and then the bilge. And I can't really get this into that second hole blind. So I'm gonna use this endoscope that I have. And you can see here, I hope that this is going to work. We will see. There we go. That's the hole. Mm, we're through. <laughs> That's awesome. Let's see here. Oh, yes. That's it. Dude, I can't believe I got that in there. I literally had to work that hose into like three different holes to get it to here. Okay, so now I've just gotta connect the discharge hose to the washing machine, which sounds easy, but it's actually one of those things where it's like I can't actually see what I'm doing. Okay, got the discharge hose on. <laughs> Oh my God, it's ridiculous. Oh, dude, I'm so beat, man. That was a long day. I think everything is good to go. It should be functional. So, okay, here we go. Let's give this a try. Na, 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 na. Okay, I'm selecting wash and dry. 
So just to test, Isabella just threw up on this sweatshirt thing of hers. So we're gonna do this. Okay, here goes nothing. Okay, no leaks. Well, that right there, it's gonna change our lives. <laughs> I can't even like begin to express how awesome this is that we are washing clothes without having to do it manually on the boat. Little baby can poop and throw up to her heart's content now. <laughs> we can keep up with it. Good morning, lady. How you doing today? How are the ladies? Doing good. She had a good night of sleep. Although she did get up at like 5 a.m. and was like, I'm wide awake now, Mom. Let's hang out. <laughs> are you a little chubby cheek? Are you yeah. <laughs> are you a little chubby cheek? <laughs> well, are you excited to do your first load of laundry on the boat? Yes, I am. Mostly because we're down to her favorite three outfits. Well, they're my favorite three outfits because they're stretchy and easy to get on and now easy to clean. So I only need three of them because in the morning I just throw two of them in the washer, and then a couple of hours they're done. So we're just recycling, aren't we? Yes, we are, and you get to look cute every day. Okay, lady, let's clean your outfit. <laughs> Very exciting. On. Da, 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 da. Ooh, <laughs> it's hello. like, oh, okay, let's do laundry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, close it. There you go, start. and then start. There it goes. <laughs> oh my God. So now what it's doing is it's mm -hmm. measuring the weight of it mm -hmm. and then it tells you how long it's gonna take. So it's gonna oh. take 88 minutes. Cool. And that's to wash and dry. So I get an 88 minute nap while you take Isa for a walk. Mind blown, right baby? Speaking of mind blown, I've been showing her this mirror and I think it's shattering her conception of the universe. Of reality. Yeah, look. yeah, she is into it. She watching herself? Yeah. It's like, who's that She's smiling at herself. Yeah. She's like, what's up, good looking? What's up, lady? <laughs> hey, bud. Check it out. Dry clothes. On the toilet. On the toilet. Hi, lady. How are you? Hi, your clothes are clean, are you a baby. Good baby. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Got a shirt for you, buddy. You want to change into it? <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> when we first even started thinking about having a baby, I was super nervous. And then when Issa was delivered, I was nervous. In the first couple weeks, I was nervous. But now, like, I'm getting more used to her. She's getting more used to us. She's getting a lot better. She's crying a lot less. Mm -hmm. And then with something like the washing machine, I see the way. Like, the path is laid out before us, you know? It's like, there is a way to raise this baby on this boat and not go crazy. Good, right, baby. You want to do a diaper change then? Yeah, diaper time. <laughs>